Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for being here today. I know it's a really crazy time of year and you probably have so much on your plate, maybe planning for company visiting or you got to get some last minute shopping done. So I'm just so honored that you tuned in and uh, you're here with me this week. So I hope to encourage you as you wrap up your 2022 season, I'm going to give you some things to marinate on and celebrate as you wrap up this season. I know we have listeners, actually quite a few listeners in Australia, New Zealand, down under in the Southern Hemisphere. Sorry that I did that, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> And you guys are in the middle of your crazy wedding season, which I still kind of can't wrap my mind around that the seasons are flip-flopped. But anyway, maybe you can save this episode and come back to it in like May or whenever things start slowing down for you. So we're cheering you on as you are working hard and we are getting ready to sit on the couch for a couple weeks. So... (laughs) We're sending you our love in the meantime. Okay, so today we're going to celebrate five areas of our business that have nothing to do with money. Because a lot of times when we come to the end of our season, you know, we look at the data. And sometimes, for some of us, the only data that we see or numbers that we see it is money. So um, there are so many other areas of your business where you've grown that maybe you haven't even considered yet. And I hope to inspire uh, that little celebration party for you. So there are five separate areas that we'll talk about. This will be a pretty shorty episode because I know you got a lot to do. Maybe you can save this episode or take some notes and then journal about it later when you're, you know, snuggling up by the fire with a cup of cocoa or something. All right, before we get started, I wanted to acknowledge one of our awesome sponsors for our upcoming retreat. So big shout out to Fiskars for supporting us financially and donating some beautiful items for our swag bags. So each attendee for the retreat is leaving with a swag bag full of um, sewing tools, um, some personal little gifts, some things just to um, get you excited for 2023. And uh, Fiskars has contributed to that. So thank you so much, Fiskars. And if you are still on the fence to join the retreat, you have about... A week and a half to make that decision. So our registration closes on January 1st because I need to get all the information out to our registrants and get information from them to make the experience the best and the most personal experience it could possibly be. So if you're still on the fence, head to the link in the show notes and register and I will do a little happy dance when I see your registration come in. All right, so thank you Fiskars. Let's dive into the podcast episode and uh, get ready to celebrate all of your wins. All right, number one, I want you to celebrate the consistency that you've had in your business. Now, this comes from multiple areas in your business, okay? So if you answered an email when they came in, if you picked up the phone when your phone rang, if you returned your voicemails, by the way, I don't know if it's just me, like returning voicemails or returning messages from voicemails totally stresses me out. So um, I don't have brides call my personal cell, but even like just in general, like when my friends call, I'm like, can you just text me? Because when you leave me a voicemail, it I don't know what it does to me, but it like stresses me out. Anyway, that was a side note. So you get a little extra celebration if you have returned phone calls because <laughs> that you get an extra award from my book if you've done that. Or yeah, if you've returned those emails, if you've shown up consistently on social media, even if it's like once a week, you just have those weekly posts, you show up, maybe you have um, a, a Facebook Uh, business page where you regularly show up there, that consistency is such a big deal because it speaks to your character as a business owner. And even when things get busy or you feel overwhelmed, it's like you're still sticking to that, um, that regular communication with your clients or with your community and um, your consistency, not only with your um, your communication, but with your work is also something to be celebrated. So you're not like, okay, I'm, I'm putting in a bunch of work this week and then this next week, I actually don't care how this dress turns out. I'm gonna just put in half the effort and hope it all turns out great. Okay, so the consistency is what happens despite your mood, despite how you feel physically, despite, you know, um, if a bride hurts your feelings or maybe the mother of the bride says something that's not super kind, you still deliver just quality service, whether that's in your communication or in your physical work. And the consistency is what leads to something further down the line, your brand development. I'm getting too excited, so I don't want to get out of order, but the number one thing to celebrate is your consistency. You had 12 months where you decided to still show up even when you were tired or when you weren't in the mood. And I don't know about you, but I've definitely been in the position where I'm like, I don't want to work. I don't want to 
respond to this email. Um, I sometimes daydream about like letting my inbox just fill up for two weeks, but then I know that like it'd be a pain two weeks later to answer everything. <laughs> But we all get there. We're like, oh, do I really have to like follow up with this person? You know, it's considerable work and it's just kind of always there. It's like that job security, right? There's always going to be people to call back and always emails to respond to. You're always going to have that social media presence that you're going to want to fulfill. And even once we clear our line, like the dresses are out the door, guess what? There's going to be a new bridesmaid that walks in or a new bride and you have been consistent to serve them well. So and consistent to show up. So celebrate your consistency. Think of it this way. If you weren't consistent, you probably wouldn't have clients because they would know that you're not reliable to get back in touch with them or fulfill their needs. So Kudos to you for being consistent. Second thing I want you to celebrate are your new skills that you've learned. Now, sometimes we, we don't take the time, well, that's this whole list, right? Are the things that we haven't taken time to celebrate. But think about all of the new skills that you haven't given yourself credit for learning. And it can be tech related, sewing related, um, when you think about, okay, I got this dress and we know that designs in dresses are changing regularly and rapidly. And we're constantly having to just like, okay, figure it out. This is a new design in a dress. How the heck do I take it apart and put it back together the right way and make it look like I didn't touch the thing, right? All of these skills that you're learning per dress, that's kind of a big deal, right? And it may have been a headache in the moment, but then you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I nailed that. So I had a friend this summer who, um, she had to like do some really significant changes to the bust cups of the dress. And she is like an incredible dressmaker. So the thoughts of her even like not knowing how to do something with her eyes closed is kind of mind boggling to me because she's so impressive. But she had to do some research and, and ask some other seamstresses for ideas and she nailed it. And now this is like a new skill that if this comes up again with a future bride, it's like she can do that confidently, right? So we all have those moments, maybe not as dramatic as that transformation, but we all have those little skills that we have to learn as we're working through dresses, um, especially as these new designs come in, right? So kudos to you for learning the new sewing skills. Let's talk about those tech skills, okay? Speaking of things changing rapidly, some of you created your first reel this year. so. Um, let's throw you a big party for that because <laughs> those could be a pain in the butt. Or maybe you created your first uh, uh, TikTok or maybe you even just opened up your first Instagram account or you started your Facebook business page. That was a new skill. Maybe you started a new website. And what's really great is now a lot of these um, kind of like boxed website companies have great DIY step-by-step -step ways to develop like a Wix page or Squarespace. So thankfully it's made it a little bit easier, but let's not like lose sight of the fact that it's still a lot of time and it's a lot of um, thought and creativity and dedication. Did I already mention time? Yeah, that has to go into building a website. So if you've done that, you've learned like a bazillion new skills. So kudos to you. Maybe you developed a smarter way to communicate with your brides or to maybe, um, intake, have a, a cleaner intake form for your brides or gather that information. There are so many different skills that you have to learn just to stay current in um, 2022's wedding industry, right? So don't lose sight of all of those big tech wins. Maybe you um, figured out how to use Canva. I mean, there are all these apps that are coming to mind now <laughs> or, you know, new, um, maybe there are applications on your phone or uh, websites that have been helpful to keep things organized for you, um, whether it was by choice or maybe you were forced into learning a new skill for, you know, tech reasons, give yourself credit for that because uh, that is no small feat. Okay. And I, I used to call myself technologically inept. I'm not quite inept anymore, but I'm not like awesome by any means. So it's like, I just, I learned what I have to, to get by and, you know, one small step at a time. Okay, let's see, what other new skills? Maybe you had to navigate a really difficult situation with a bride or with the family of a bride, and you had to figure out how to communicate professionally through the difficult situation. That is an incredible skill. And now, when you have you know difficult situations in the future, you can fall back on this experience, pull from the words that you used, the email that you sent, or, or 
you know, however you ended up communicating with the family. And that experience is going to help you in the future. So you have developed so many skills through that hard situation that will definitely help you as your business grows. So whatever your new skills are, take a minute to think, what did I not know December 2021 that I have learned and I'm actually pretty good at now in December 2022? And give yourself a little woohoo for that as well. All right, next thing to celebrate uh, are the action steps that you have taken. So a wise woman once told me, celebrate the actions, not the results. And that was one of the greatest things I could have applied to my business because when we decide to do something, when we make changes, um, you know, when we take these action steps, it can be really easy to focus only on the results. So it's like, if I do A, I'm going to get B. Or if I, you know, change this part of my business, I'm going to get this amount of money, or I'm going to get this type of client, or I'm going to feel this way. And sometimes we put so much emphasis on what we get from the action step that we kind of forget to celebrate that you actually went out on the limb and you did the thing and you took the action step. So celebrate the actions. Think of things that um, you had to decide to do that made you feel a bit uncomfortable. You were nervous. If you were sweaty, that's usually a good sign, right? We know the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward when it comes to building our business, which is ee, a little bit scary, especially if you like love to plan ahead and know all the things ahead of time like me. Um, any risk can feel really scary. So I've tried, I'm trying to continually train myself to celebrate my action steps as opposed to putting so much pressure on the results before I celebrate it. So for instance, um, if I, um, I'm thinking of even a couple years ago when I first heard this expression, I really wanted to start working with a very specific kind of bride and have that specific bride continually book with me. And my goal at the time was like, okay, I want X amount of, of brides, this specific bride a month. And so I started kind of changing my marketing ideas, the wording that I put out there on my website and on social media, and I was celebrating, okay, I'm changing my verbiage, I'm changing the way that my website looks, and I'm doing this thing, it's taking me time and energy, and so I'm just celebrating the fact that I'm taking these action steps, and then whoever comes to me comes to me. And I could, I could just kind of like let the weight come off my shoulders because I knew that I was doing the work necessary to get that thing accomplished, but I was still celebrating it even if I didn't have those brides rolling in yet. And you know, it just was a matter of time before my clientele shifted more towards the clients that I really, really wanted to work with. Um, but it's celebrating all those steps along the way. And then that also just kind of like trains your brain to think, hey, the stuff that I want to do, I actually get it done. And um, I don't need to depend on how other people respond to me or the other situations respond to me. I can just kind of focus on my own growth and the, the actions that I am responsible for and celebrate those. So think through the year of 2022, all of those action steps that you took. So kind of going back to the new skills, maybe it was the fact that you, you know, built that website and that was the big action step. And you want to celebrate that instead of focusing on, okay, how many people actually visited the website? Don't get bogged down by that. Stick to the celebration of the fact that you built the website. Does that make sense? Or, okay, you had this goal of um, showing up weekly to post on social media um, as your free advertising, right? Your free marketing. And you can't focus on who commented or who liked, but the point was you took the action and you stuck with it. And again, falling back to you learn the new skill of how to post on the Instagrams or on the TikToks, and then you were consistent. And those are the things to celebrate, um, not how many other people commented or liked because that's how you really get bogged down. And I was just talking to a girlfriend a couple of days ago and she's in a completely different niche. Um, she's not in the wedding industry at all, but um, she's been trying to build her business and there's just been a lot of areas where she feels like just really defeated. But as an outsider, I'm looking at her and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's been four months. In four months, you've built this, you've done this, you've put yourself out there in this area and that area. And I'm thinking there are so many action steps to celebrate, but she was too busy putting the emphasis on how others were going to respond and like the numbers and the data that she couldn't really celebrate what she had done in four months, right? 
So maybe you're that you're in that stage in your business where um, the the actual clients aren't like flooding yet, but you've taken so many steps to prepare yourself for clients, to pave the way for the website build or the branding. So celebrate all those steps because it's a big deal, even if um, you know the voices in your head are telling you it's not a big deal. That's what this whole episode is about, right? Celebrating all the things that the weird voices in your head tell you that they're not a big deal. Okay, the fourth one are your happy clients. I am the queen of focusing on all the bad stuff. (laughs) And I'm sure actually all of us, um, we can be queen for a day, you know, to think of only the negative stuff or just, oh man, focus on those three brides this year who were just like, oh my goodness, so scary. And I lose sight of, okay, actually there were like 113 other brides who were magnificent and I had a great relationship with and I cried when they left or whatever. So I, and I think I've shared this with you before, my goal for this next year is to have a cork board in my back office where I keep all my dresses and my sewing supplies and um, have pictures of my awesome brides from this past year and have them on the cork board as like a, a reminder of the good, like the reason that I love this job because they outnumber the icky experiences like literally 100 to 1. Okay, or maybe like 90, 90 to 1. I don't know. I don't know. I never said math was a strong suit. Okay. But like they really outweigh the negative rides or the negative experiences. And so when we think like back to the end of the year, and even as I'm saying this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I think of like, I had three who were a little tricky this year. I've already shared that with you. But, um, and it's like, why are those the ones who kind of like stand out to me? And I, I hate that. I'm still trying to train my brain to just like focus on the awesome ones. Cause there were so many of them. So go through each month, like, okay, January, I saw these people, February, March, no, go month by month. And I don't know if you have a way of keeping track of all the brides that you've worked with. Um, I have my, I have like a checklist, you know, that I work with for each bride and I write down all the things that I'm, that's also how I give them their quote during their first fitting is like, I wrote down all the work that needs to be done and whatever. So there's a copy for them. There's a copy for me. So then I have my stack of, um, all the brides that I've worked with throughout the year. And that has been really fun to reflect upon. So I, I did that for the first time last year where I like pulled out all the sheets and I just kind of flipped through and, you know, of course, even if they weren't like super dramatic, like horrible experiences, sometimes you're like, oh, phew. Yeah. I remember being really happy when that dress left my shop, but for the most part, it was like, oh man, they were awesome. I love this one. Oh, she was so sweet. Oh, her mom was so cute to me. Or like, you know, oh, she left a great tip or whatever. Like all these good things to remember. So whatever it is that can retrain your brain to just focus on the great clients that you've worked with, um, give yourself that chance to focus on the good. And I'm right alongside you if you find yourself still like, I don't know, give an attention where it doesn't belong. Okay. So, and if you come up with another idea to um, celebrate the great brides that you've worked with, send them my way because I'd love to add that to my, my list of how I'll celebrate the awesome brides in 2023. Okay. And finally, I want you to think about and celebrate your brand development. So everything that you have done in 2022, whether you have intended to do this or not, it's actually been developing your brand. So every time you communicate with a client, whether that's like via email or you've called them, every fitting that you've hosted, every dress that you have completed, every social media post, every blog post, um, every time you've updated your website, these have all been subtle ways that you have been building your brand and developing that brand. And we recently had a training within our Secrets of Bridal Seamstress membership where we talked about, or we, I wasn't the one talking about it because I'm not a brand expert. We had a branding and web developer, wait, a web developer and branding expert, (laughs) there we go, talking to us about what branding really is. And sometimes we put so much emphasis on like the colors of my logo or my brand name. It's like, yeah, that's part of your brand, but more so are the emotions that your brand triggers in your clients and how to um, communicate with your clients that you can fulfill their needs as a business owner. So your branding is so much more than the colors and the logo, and it has more to do with who you are like on a daily basis, how you interact with your clients, what kind of services you put out regularly. And like I said, most of the time it's like, I think 
uh, it's subconscious. And sometimes that can serve us. And then that can also be a disservice to us because um, it is uh, it's just an all encompassing thing. Our branding is us, especially when we're like, um, we are one of the only people working in our business. Even if you do have an employee or two, you are still the brand. So it's how it's who you are and it's how you're interacting with the world and with your community, with your brides that is developing your brand. So you look back on this whole list, the ways that you've been consistent, the new skills that you've learned, like your action steps that you've taken to further develop the brand, um, the brides that you've served, the clients that you've served, that's also been developing your brand. It's kind of like this culmination of the whole year is just strengthening who you are and what you're offering to your community. And this is also a time where you can be like, okay, this is the brand that I'm putting out there. Do I want to continue that or do I need to make some changes? So uh, this little reflection sheet, you have a lot to celebrate, but you are a sheet. I have a sheet in front of me, but you just maybe have like a sheet in your mind. <laughs> as you're listening. So this reflection list, I should say, um, you should be celebrating all of these things, but there may be some areas where you're like, hmm, I could, I could maybe grow in those areas a little bit more intentionally in 2023. So that's the beauty of reflection, right? And celebration. We want to be super excited about the ways that we've grown, but also be open to things that we may need to tweak a little bit um, and not lose sight of the fact that you've come so far because of the things that you're already doing right. So if you had to, um, you know, reinvent the wheel in every like area of your business, well, then you wouldn't have gotten through 2022 to tell the tale. You know what I'm saying? Like something is, is going really well for you to have come through a whole 12 months of a business and still be in the positive and, you know, have a business that's running with, with quality reviews and with happy customers and all these things to celebrate. So, um, if you are in that boat where you're like, I did not make my money goal and do I continue with this? Or I'm such a loser because you know, so-and-so, she's been telling me that she's been making all this money and I'm still stuck here. Um, you know, it's been a weird year too. So there are a lot of things to consider when we're considering our money goals. Okay. So that's number one. And number two, you have come so far because of all of these excellent things that you're already doing in your business. So, um, at the beginning of the year, I'll have a podcast episode that talks about, um, reflection within your business. And so this is the celebration one. Then we're going to have a reflection episode where you can consider what are some areas that I could change a little bit. And I'm going to have a form available on our website for you to use and kind of go through with some journaling prompts. And hopefully that'll kind of fire up your start to 2023. So hope this gave you some things to celebrate, maybe give you some new ideas. Um, to consider within your business that you haven't thought of as reasons to celebrate before. Um, if you tune in next week, I'm going to have a special episode all about rest and what does rest mean? And it means more than just like sitting on the couch for two weeks, although that is part of my rest. So that's what I'll be doing. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope you give yourself a lot of grace as you are reflecting back on this year and that these five things to celebrate just inspire some really good feelings for you. So think about your consistency, your new skills that you've learned, all the action steps that you've taken and you haven't given yourself enough credit for. Think about the happy clients that far outnumber any maybe icky client situation that you've experienced. And then finally, think about and celebrate your brand development. <music>